Welcome back. You've joined us once again for another Tutorial Tuesday. And this week, we're going to be doing something just a touch different. We're going to be editing a photo, which admittedly is not different. But we're also going to be talking about overlooking photos and how easy that can be. And actually, how some of the photos you might overlook can actually turn out really, really nice. So we're going to look at Lightroom. We're going to look at Photoshop a little bit as well. We're probably going to push the line a little bit further than some of us would want to go in terms of editing. That's fine. I think sometimes you have to push it too far in order to kind of grow and learn as a photographer, because even though you might not want to use that as a, as a photo, if we push it a little bit too far, we, we work out, first of all, where our line is for editing photos. And then secondly, we are able to kind of kind of learn a few new techniques which might help us in photography and actually taking the photos and what we're looking for out of the photo when we're actually taking it rather than adding it in in editing. So while yes, I totally understand that where the end result is going to get to for this particular photo might not be where everyone would take it, we're going to try it out, we're going to see what happens and hopefully we're all going to kind of grow as photographers along the way. That sounds a little bit pretentious. It's fine. We're going to we're going to dive in. So I've got this photo here. We're going to talk about overlooking photos. Now, I went out and I took this photo. It was just kind of a stormy day. There was a storm brewing and I wanted to get a photo. I've always wanted to take a photo of this farmhouse with super stormy weather and stuff like that. I think it's a nice kind of composition with the farmhouse. I like the kind of rolling hills. I like this long grass, but the light wasn't great. The sky wasn't that interesting as it turned out. You know, it's not bad, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I probably was a bit early in terms of the storm, but then the light wouldn't have been good later because it was already kind of later in the day anyway. So it just wasn't going to work out. And sometimes you still have to go out and take the photo, right? Even if the light isn't perfect or even if the situation isn't exactly what you wanted it to be, sometimes it's still beneficial to go out and take the photo, which is exactly what I did here. And then you get back and you look at it on the computer and this is normally, or at least a few years ago, this is the kind of photo that I probably would have skipped past. I wouldn't have saved this one. I wouldn't have gone to the trouble of editing this one because I would have thought probably it's not that great. There's nothing that interesting about it, light-wise or sky-wise or really anything. Let's move on to the next photo and just keep going through. And this probably would have been binned. But now I look at this photo and I think, can I bring this to a level that I wanted it to be at the time? I had no control over the light. The storm just didn't look the way I wanted it to look. Am I going to be able to bring this up to that same level? There's a, a lot of this is not actually going to be taking it that far in terms of photo manipulation. You know, dodging and burning is just a huge part of what we would do to manipulate the light here. And that's a technique that photographers have been using for decades, you know, way before digital photography as well. So we're going to look at how we can bring the light to the level that we wanted. And then we're going to look at some Photoshop stuff to see, you know, where we can take things as well. And I'd be interested to know in the comments, where was your line for editing? while we edit this photo. Where would you have stopped? Where would you have brought it to and thought no more? That's moving from photography to kind of general art. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments. So let me know, absolutely. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not saying that anything is right or wrong in terms of how far we take it, but it's an interesting kind of exercise to see how far we can go and what we can learn from that for our photography going forward. So let's dive in. We've got the photo open in Lightroom here. This is completely unedited. So we're gonna do a basic global edit first of all. Bit of contrast, bring those highlights down to kind of bring out the sky a little bit. Let's bring the shadows up a touch, bit of texture, bit of clarity, a little bit of vibrance. I'm gonna bring the saturation down a touch. We're gonna to leave the tone curve for a moment. We might come back to it. Hue, saturation and luminance tab. Let's just do sort of a basic thing here. We're gonna bring the oranges down to kind of a deeper orange the yellows down to the orange as well, because I, I like the way that it makes the long grass here look. Let's bring the greens down to the sort of yellows as well. Yeah, I think I prefer towards the yellows and a little bit of teal into the blues. Let's leave the color grading, the kind of adding colors into the shadows, the midtones, the highlights for now. Let's come down, we're gonna leave the detail as well. I've already enabled profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. I think it's always just gonna tick those boxes so we know where we are. Let's leave the transform tab as well for a moment. And we're going to add a little bit of a vignette here. Not too much, but just a bit. And the calibration, I'm going to bring the reds over to the oranges a little bit, the blues over to the teal. Nothing major, right? We've not done a huge amount. Let's just press Y to see 
side by side, before and after. So I like the colouring we've given this so far. I'm going to actually bring the entire exposure up just a tad because I think it needs to be brightened. Let's see before and after. You can also press the backslash key to see the before photo there and then press it again to see your edited photo so far. So nice. Okay, I think we've done kind of a decent basic global edit. I like the colouring and it's a little bit brighter as well. Now we're going to start shaping the light a little bit. Let's bring in a gradient filter or graduated filter as it's called in Lyrum. Let's just bring that over the sky. And what I want to do, let's just make that a little bit, a little bit hard like that. I want to bring it over the sky like that. And I'm going to double click effect here to reset all of these sliders. I'm just going to bring the clarity up on the sky. And I think I'm going to bring the, the blacks down maybe and the, the shadows down. That didn't do that much. Contrast up. Let's bring the exposure down maybe a touch. Just to darken up that sky a little bit. Let's click done. Okay, I like that actually. That's brought out an interesting looking sky. It might be that we replace the sky in Photoshop uh, later. But we'll see when we get there. We'll see what this looks like. Now, let's go ahead and bring a radial filter in here. This is how we're going to shape the light and actually do some dodging and burning. Because what I wanted and what I waited for a long time to see if it could happen was light to kind of poke through the clouds onto the farmhouse. That's exactly what I wanted to happen and it didn't. So that's what we're going to try and make happen. Let's bring in a radial filter. Again, double click effect here to reset all of these sliders. And I'm going to create kind of an oval shape over this farmhouse. And I'm going to bring the exposure on that up quite a bit there to something like that. Now we can always come back and adjust that a little bit, maybe make it bigger, maybe increase or decrease the exposure. I'm going to click new here to make a new radial filter. And I'm going to make an even bigger kind of oval shape, which I'm going to again put over the uh, the farmhouse here. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's get some of these trees in there. I'm going to click this invert down here. So untick that box. That's now going to affect everything outside of the circle. Let's bring that exposure down a touch. There we go. Quite like that. Let's click done. So now we've got this kind of light just on the farmhouse here. I might even go in and actually bring the exposure up on this one. So we can just click the radial filter here and find these little kind of dots that indicate the filters that we've made on the photo. And we can go and click those and then we can adjust these sliders. I'm going to bring that up a touch. And I'm going to bring the other one down a touch. So we really kind of make a point of this is where the light is hitting. Now I'm going to get a graduated filter again, almost says gradient. I almost said gradient, but graduated filter. And I'm going to bring that in from the bottom. I'm actually going to move that up a little bit. I want to darken this foreground. So I'm going to bring it up to about there. And I'm just going to bring the exposure down of that. Lovely. Now that is starting to look how I wanted the landscape to look. We've got kind of a darker feel with these storm clouds and one kind of shaft of light hitting the farmhouse. Let's press the backslash key. This is where we started and this is where we are now. Let's press the Y key to see them side by side. Now you might be thinking, I like it, but <laughs> the radial filter over the farmhouse it's too pronounced. It's too strong. Well, if you do feel that way, we can go into the radial filter. We can click one of these dots. We can actually increase or decrease the feather of the radial filter. For now, though, let's leave it as it was. Let's see where we end up and we can always go back and change things later if we want to as well. Let's bring an adjustment brush in instead. Now, again, double click effect to actually bring everything down to where it should be. Let's bring the exposure up. Let's bring the dehaze down. We can increase or decrease the size of the brush with the mouse wheel. And I'm bringing the flow down to about 75. Now that means that we're just painting it on slightly more gradually. and We can build up the effect by continually painting over the same area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring in kind of a, a brush stroke like this. See how this feels. Kind of over onto our farmhouse here. Let's make a bigger brush and go for something like that. Okay, I quite like that. I think that looks quite nice. Let's maybe even warm up that, that light. 
that looks a bit much, doesn't it? That is a bit too far. So, okay, let's leave it as it was. You know what? I think it's time to bring this into Photoshop and see what we can do. I, I like where we've ended up with this. Let's press the backslash key again. That was where we started. This is where we've kind of ended up with Lightroom. I think probably what I'm going to do is try some different stuff in Photoshop, see what happens. And we can kind of go from there. So we can do that really easily with the Adobe Creative Cloud kind of suite. Not sponsored, by the way. We just right click, edit in edit in Adobe Photoshop 2021. And it's now going to open this photo with all the adjustments that we've made in Photoshop, which is really, really handy because we're probably gonna do a little bit more color grading. We're maybe going to increase and play around with that light a little bit as well. And we're gonna see where we end up. We might do a sky replacement as well because Photoshop has some pretty impressive sky replacement tools now available in the program, super easy. We don't have to mess around with anything because if you're thinking to yourself, oh, a sky replacement sounds like a lot of work. It's so easy now. Let's have a look. All right, we've opened it up here. That was pretty quick as well, nice. Let's unlock the background just by clicking on that padlock symbol on the layer. And what I'm gonna do, first of all, Control J, just to duplicate that background layer. That means that I'm gonna have a layer right at the bottom, which is the photo from Lightroom untouched. So we can always go back if we want to. That way we're working non-destructively. We've got that layer at the bottom. So we're not gonna be kind of locked in to whatever we've done. First up, let's do the Sky replacement that we talked about. So with this layer selected here, let's come up to edit, sky replacement. This is literally how easy it is. And it's gonna open this new box here. And it's going to immediately identify where the sky is in the photo and then change it out for a new sky. So you can see here, the last sky I was playing around with was this sunset sky. That's absolutely not the one we're gonna use. But look how good of a job Photoshop has done at identifying where the sky is, what is sky and what isn't. Let's pick a different sky. So I'm gonna click on this drop down, and I've got a bunch of different sky packs in here. Let's click the storms pack one. And there's a few here, a few really cool ones. I mean, look at this. But the one I want to use, I don't think a tornado over beachy head is probably realistic. So we'll leave that one. I think we're gonna go for this one where we've got kind of these shafts of light coming down. That's exactly the feel we want to go for, right? That's exactly what we're looking for. So let's click that. And as you can see, it immediately just opens that on the photo, perfectly masked. I love it, it's so easy. Then we can go ahead and adjust the brightness. I don't think we need to right now. The brightness of the sky, that is. The color temperature of the sky. Again, I don't think we need to right now. We can change the scale, but I think we'll leave it as it is. And let's do a lighting and a color adjustment. So if I adjust the lighting here, it's going to try and kind of relight the foreground to kind of match the sky. So if I bring that to zero, it's exactly how we had it. And if I bring it up to 100, Photoshop's gonna try and match that a little bit to the sky. Now I'm gonna bring that to about 50 because we're gonna do a lot of that ourselves because I wanna darken some areas. I wanna do some more dodging and burning, really. We're going to see how that goes. Color adjustments, the same sort of thing. Now with this sky, there's not going to be much of a color cast, but if you're adding a sunset sky in, for example, you might have more of a color cast you want to apply to that foreground. So you'd bring the color adjustment up to 100. It doesn't really matter with this particular one, because like I say, it's not really affecting things in a color way. It's a, obviously a pretty gray kind of sky. Then we just click OK, and we've got the sky replacement in this neat little group here. So we can actually turn that off and on. Lovely. That works really well, I think. So, okay, we've got our new sky in there. Let's deselect any layer here. Let's click here to make a new adjustment layer and let's make a curves adjustment layer. Now, what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna bring a central point in the curves down like so. That actually just reduces the kind of brightness of everything because we're just reducing the overall brightness. And what I'm gonna do Oh, it's opened it in the sky replacement group. Not to worry, we can just click and drag that above the sky replacement group because I want it to affect everything. I want it to be separate from that group. Let's in fact close that group up. And you can see I've got a layer mask here as well. So it's all white, which means that this curves adjustment is affecting the entire image, the entire photo. So with that selected, I'm gonna get my paintbrush and I'm going to paint with black. So I can press X to just make the black appear instead of the white. That was my kind of secondary color. It's now my primary color. And I can paint this in. Now I can hold Alt, right click and hold, and drag right and left to increase or decrease the size of my brush and actually move the mouse up and down 
to change the hardness of the brush as well. Now, by painting black on, I'm going to be removing this curves adjustment from areas of the photo. We've got a whole video about layer masks if you want to check it out. that explains how they work and how unbelievably useful they are. But for now, I'm going to be using a flow of, let's make it, yeah, 31% is fine actually, because I want to paint this on gradually. And what I want to do with a pretty sort of big-ish soft brush, I want to just remove this curves adjustment from some of the brighter areas. So I'm just going to paint kind of across here, like so. I think that looks kind of decent. We'll just I'll just feather this out a little bit. And if you go over, you can always press Control Z to undo whatever you've just done. Or you can paint white on to actually, uh, you know, increase the area within the image that you are then applying the curves adjustment. I think this looks kind of decent. This is kind of what I wanted, this brighter area over the farmhouse itself, and then feathered out a little bit to, uh, to these sort of outer areas, which are a little bit brighter, but not anything too crazy. I think that looks quite nice. We've got nice dark areas around here. So we've essentially sort of dodged and burned the whole thing a little bit. Next, we can bring in a color adjustment to actually marry the whole thing together, kind of glue everything together because we're gonna be adjusting the colors of the sky, but also the foreground. We can come in here, adjustment layer. We're gonna go for color lookup. Now, I love this. It's going to apply a LUT, which is used a lot in video. In fact, I'll be applying a LUT to this video. Very nice. But we're going to apply it to this photo. And I love this because it creates a new layer, which we can then adjust the opacity of and all that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit like a filter, but I really, really like it. So we're going to go for, let's start with teal orange plus contrast and see what that looks like. Now, it's very, very heavy, very aggressive. So let's bring the opacity down to something like 37%. Now, I don't actually like the look of this one, so we're going to go for the Fuji Eterna 250D, which is a nice looking uh, kind of kind of LUT here, kind of filter. Let's bring the opacity up a little bit to something like 40%. I think it might still be a little bit strong, so let's try something like, we could try Moonlight to see how that looks. I quite like the look of that, actually. Hmm, I do quite like the look of that, but we're going to go back to Fuji Eterna. I'm just going to bring the opacity down to something like 26%. So we can turn that layer off and turn it on. I think that actually looks really nice. Let's uh, let's get another curves layer going here. Let's just bring the brightness up a little bit by just placing a central point on the curve and just raising it up. And you can see we've got a layer mask here. I'm going to go ahead and press Control i to turn that all black. That means this curves layer is now affecting nothing on the image. I can get my paintbrush here, select white, and with a nice sort of big-ish brush, a flow that I'm going to bring down to about 21%, that's fine. I'm going to paint this on to where the farmhouse is. Now, that means I'm just brightening up some of this area. I felt like it looked a little bit too dark. I want this to be very kind of visible. Uh, I'll just feather this out by sort of bringing out some area here, but I like that. I think that looks kind of uh, kind of decent. Let's just feather it out kind of behind as well. Nice. Okay, there we go. So now we can bring in another color lookup if we want to. This time we'll bring in that moonlight. What I liked about this a lot, let's bring the opacity down on that, obviously, quite a bit. What I liked about this quite a lot was how it affected some of the darker areas. So Again, we've got a layer mask here. I'm gonna press Control I to turn that all black. And with my paintbrush, with white selected, I can now paint on this coloring to certain areas of the photo. So I'm gonna do it in some of these darker areas. I'm literally just using my brush, 21% flow. I'm just painting in some of that kind of blue color that we get from that moonlight kind of filter. I'm just painting it into some of the darker areas and so nothing crazy, but you can see it's kind of darkening up some of the stuff. And then we can still go in and adjust the opacity of that. So if I put it at 50%, for example, we can turn that layer off and back on and we can see how that's affecting things, but we can bring the opacity down if we think the effect is too much. Let's make it about 31%. Let's maybe even bring it down to about 25%. Turn it off, turn it back on. You can see it's just kind of adding a bit of a blue cast to areas of the, uh, of the kind of darkness. Now, I think that this area over here is probably a little bit too bright. So I can go back into this curves layer here. Let's turn that off. 
see if that's making much of a difference. A little bit, I can paint black now over here, just to kind of darken this up. And I can come into this curves layer, which I believe is actually adding in kind of a, a darkness to things. And I can add in white to this kind of part here to kind of darken that up. There we go. I feel like it was, it was sort of encroaching a little bit too much over to the side. We really want to want to emphasize this farmhouse here. Okay, great. I think that looks good. I think that looks absolutely fine. The last thing I want to do, I want to just remove this sheep from the from the kind of foreground here, only because I feel like it's a little bit distracting. So I'm going to select my layer zero copy, which is going to kind of be my background layer. I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool, hold alt, right click and drag to the right to make this a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to zoom in as well. So hold alt, use the mouse wheel to zoom in on the sheep. I'm going to grab an area next to the sheep so I can hold alt and left click to grab an area and essentially then clone stamp this over here. There we go. Kind of immediately sorted that. I just feel like it's a little bit less distracting. Now I think this looks pretty good now. There's a couple of things I might do. For example, I might go into this curves adjustment here and just bring down the opacity. I think it's brightening things maybe a touch too much. I think that's a little bit better. Maybe we could uh, Maybe we could bring down the opacity of this curves adjustment as well. If that's maybe darkening things a little bit too much. Put that down something like 80%. I think it's a bit more reasonable. And maybe even the color look up of the moonlight. If I turn that off and turn that back on, it's not making too much of a difference actually, but perhaps I'll bring that down to 20%. And the other color look up, perhaps I'll bring that down to 20% as well, which is just making a little bit of a, an adjustment there. Uh, as well. I think we've done a decent job with this. So we can press Control S to save the image. That's going to save it so that when we go back to Lightroom, it's now in there with these adjustments. We've got a, essentially a copy of the image that we had before so that we can actually see exactly what we've got. And we can still make further adjustments in Lightroom if we want to as well. Once we save that, we can just close Photoshop and it's going to open it back up in Lightroom exactly like this. We could go ahead and make additional adjustments to it. So for example, we could bring in a graduated filter. So we could press that double click effect to reset all of the sliders, bring that down onto the farmhouse this way and just lower the dehaze. Now we can press O to see how that filter is being affected. Click here to brush and we can actually remove some of this as well. We know we can hold alt, use the scroll wheel to reduce the size of things and we can kind of remove some of this graduated filter from some of this area. Now I'm using a lower flow, so I'm sort of painting this on gradually. What I want to do is essentially simulate a little bit of light kind of coming down, that kind of slightly more hazy light. Let's have a look. Let's press O. Again, we can turn this off and back on. That actually looks pretty decent. Maybe if we bring the exposure up a touch as well. I actually don't mind that at all. So let's go ahead and click done. And the last thing I might want to do is just crop this image a little bit, actually. I like a 16 by nine. I think that would look great. So let's go to 16 by nine. Let's make it so that it's a little bit more like, like this kind of thing. I want to get rid of this highlight up in the top. Let's see how that looks. I quite like that. What if we bring that up a little bit? Maybe even make this a little bit. There we go. So we've got a little bit of that highlight, but not too much. And there we go. I like the image. I like where we've got to. I like where we've ended up. Let's see where we started, shall we? So this was the uh, the original image. Let's go ahead and see the before. That's where we started. And then this is where we have ended up, which I really like. Going back and looking at the actually edited photo here, though, that's not horrible. So perhaps that's where I would have stopped myself. Uh, but I'd love to know your thoughts about where we ended up. It's an interesting kind of process and exercise to go through anyway. I think sometimes it can make you a better photographer. Sometimes it can make you think about different things. And I like the idea of kind of working with an image like this and sometimes taking it past the point that you maybe would get to and stop because sometimes it's interesting to see where you end up. And that's, you know, this is one way of, uh, of finding that out. So let me know down in the comments your thoughts. Where would you have stopped? I'd love to know. We're going to talk more about overlooking images, actually, and uh, potentially failing and all that kind of stuff in future Tutorial Tuesdays. But anything you want to hear about, anything you would like covered, let me know down in the comments. Of course, 
there's a full list of all the kit used for this photo and this video and everything in the in the description not in the comments in the description <laughs> uh don't forget to like and subscribe all the things don't forget to like and subscribe i'll see you in the next video and as always thanks for watching